Humans have been fascinated with speed ever since we've been able to use machines to travel from place to place. 1899 saw the first land speed racer driven by Kami Janatsi hit a blistering 65.79 miles per hour. 1912 saw the Titanic trying to set the record for the fastest crossing of the Atlantic Ocean. That same year, pilot Jules Vedrin was the first to take an airplane to over 100 miles per hour. And ever since then, we've been going faster and faster in the air, on the land, and on the water. This technological advancement has been especially fascinating and important in the field of aeronautics. While traveling on land and even on water is much harder and a bit impractical as far as its application, traveling through the air at supersonic speeds has proven to be of great importance, leading to the development of some seriously impressive aircraft. From the F-14 Tomcat to the SR-71 Blackbird, here are five airplanes that can break the speed of sound. Chuck Yeager was an Air Force pilot in World War II, flying a P-51 Mustang on the Western Front. After the war, Yeager stayed on and served as a test pilot for many experimental aircraft. In 1947, Yeager was approached and offered the chance to test an experimental rocket-powered aircraft with the goal of flying faster than the speed of sound. On October 14th of that year, Jaeger's aircraft, a Bell X-1, which he named Glamorous Glennis after his first wife, was taken up in the bomb bay of a B-29 to an altitude of 45,000 feet. Once released, the X-1's four rockets activated and propelled his jet to a speed of Mach 1.06, or 1.06 times the speed of sound, and held that speed for 20 seconds. As his plane soared over the onlookers' heads, a sonic boom shook them. It was the first instance that a sonic boom had been observed. The mission was top secret at the time. However, after three years, the public was informed of Jaeger's achievements and he pretty much became a celebrity overnight. His X-1 aircraft now hangs in the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. On December 7, 2020, at the age of 97, Jaeger passed away having not only been the first person to break the sound barrier, but flying in World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. After first taking flight in 1970, the Grumman F-14 Tomcat was undoubtedly the fiercest fighter jet ever engineered. It was a twin-engine, two-seat, twin-tail, variable-sweep wing fighter that was capable of supersonic speeds. The Tomcat was first deployed in 1974 aboard the USS Enterprise to be used for a multitude of purposes, none more famous than being a crucial force against enemy MiG fighters during the Vietnam War. One of the most unique and integral designs of the F-14 Tomcat is its variable geometry wings. The wing sweep can be varied between 20 and 68 degrees in flight. It's all dependent on the situation and what is needed. Fixed wing gloves can be fitted with weaponry if a pilot is running an air-to-ground campaign. It's when the wings are swept back that the real performance of the Tomcat can be seen. When the wings are in this position, the fighter can reach its top speed of Mach 2.4. Here's a clip of an F-14 breaking the speed of sound. The aircraft stayed in service until 2006, when it was retired and replaced with the Boeing FA-18E Super Hornet. To this day, there have been very few aircraft that could match the versatility and effectiveness of the Tomcat. During the late 50s and early 60s, American aerospace company Lockheed Corporation started work on the development of a long-range interceptor that had the ability to not only engage enemy fighters, but to run high-altitude reconnaissance. So they came out with the YF-12, replacing the F-106 Delta Dart. This twin-seat fighter came with an AIM-47 ANASG-18 fire control radar and was capable of being loaded with AIM-47 Falcon air-to-air -air missiles. During the 60s, it underwent flight evaluations but was not put into use since the Vietnam War took up too much of the funding at the time. Instead, it underwent a series of tests to evaluate its full capabilities. It set the airspeed record for the time at 2,000 miles per hour and even set an altitude record of 80,000 feet. After it was retired, it was then passed to NASA. 
For the time in which it was in use, 2,000 miles per hour was an incredible speed, equaling out to Mach 2.6. Even though the YF-12 didn't see much action during its lifetime, the abilities of the aircraft were useful in the study of supersonic flight. In somewhat of the same family as the YF-12, the SR-71 was an improved long-range, high-altitude strategic reconnaissance aircraft. However, unlike the YF-12, which had the capability to fire air-to-air -air missiles, the SR-71 was strictly for observation. There were plans at one point to make it into an aircraft capable of air-to-air -air combat, which is what the YF-12 was, but the program was cancelled due to high costs. President Lyndon B. Johnson revealed the existence of the YF-12 to the public as a move to distract them from the development of the SR-71 Blackbird. The Air Force truly built the Blackbird to be second to none when it came to spy planes. Equipment for this aircraft included signal intelligence sensors, side-looking airborne radar, and a very powerful photo camera. It was a two-seat aircraft that was built longer and heavier than its predecessor, the A-12. During its reconnaissance missions, the SR-71 was able to achieve speeds of Mach 3.2 and reach heights of 85,000 feet. This made the aircraft incredibly hard to detect and even harder to shoot down. As a matter of fact, if an enemy was lucky enough to fire a missile at it, the plane was capable of simply outrunning it. A total of 32 aircraft were built, with 12 being lost in an accident, none of which were to enemies. It was retired once in 1989, just prior to Operation Desert Storm. In 1993, it was brought back out of retirement to run missions over North Korea and other areas in that region by President Bill Clinton. This was due to the fact that its replacement, the U-2s and RC-135s, did not hold up to the same standards as the SR-71, especially for speed. It was finally permanently retired in 1998. It is the fastest air-breathing jet engine aircraft in the world. However, it does not hold the airspeed record for manned aircraft. The title for the fastest aircraft ever built goes to the North American X-15, a hypersonic rocket-powered aircraft that was operated by NASA and the United States Air Force as part of the X-Plane Experimental Aircraft Series. This program was designed to test and evaluate new technologies and concepts in aerodynamics. In October of 1967, while testing the limits of the aircraft's flight capabilities, pilot William Pete Knight flew a test flight of the X-15 that took him 19.34 miles above the Earth. As the flight progressed, he also set the all-time speed record by traveling at Mach 6.7 or 5,140.7 miles per hour. It still holds the record for the fastest speed reached in a manned aircraft. This helped NASA and Air Force engineers understand the stresses that an aircraft is capable of taking during high speeds and at high altitudes. Currently, there are no other aircraft that can match the speed of the X-15, as it's usually rockets that travel at that speed. There is no doubt that we will find new ways to push boundaries. As our technology improves, so will our ability to go faster and fly higher. Will we reach our limit anytime soon? Will we only discover our limits when it costs the life of a pilot? It's hard to tell, but whatever the future holds, it will be interesting to see. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll definitely want to click the link on screen now to watch another. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.